Hey guys, welcome to part six of our series. It's not up to you today. I want to encourage you that if you will stand still, if you will stay calm and you will watch the Lord work in your life, that he will do it. He will save you. He will help you. He will open a door that needs to be open. He will shut a door that you can't shut, but man, you want it to be shut. He can provide something out of the midst of nowhere. You could wake up tomorrow morning and something could happen that you can't even believe, that you could never even plan for if you will stand still, stay calm, and watch the Lord. But here's what I'm learning. When we believe that it's not up to us, but God has to step in and do it. If the miraculous is going to happen in our lives, if the if the things that are beyond our imagination, which therefore could only be in his imagination, are going to be orchestrated in our lives, only he can orchestrate them, then it's got to be up to him. But if it's up to him, then he has to come in, get involved in our lives, and do those miraculous things. Here's the deal. God is a relational God. He's only going to come in when we invite him in. And he is like a heat-seeking missile, and he's looking for heat. <laughs> he's looking for people who are passionate, sometimes people who are desperate, people who are on fire. You can read story after story in the Bible. The people who are on fire, the people who are desperate, the people who say, you know what, whatever I need to do for you, God, to understand that you got to show up, I'm going to do that. I want to tell you a story I might have told you before. I'm telling it again. It's so good. It's of a husband and a wife team. Uh, he was a, a preacher, a pastor, and together they went to Philadelphia in the early 1900s. They went to the poorest, uh, most unsafe area in Philadelphia, uh, especially back then, extreme poverty, uh, very poor and unsafe. And he, her husband, the wife's husband, was having such a difficult time getting through um, into the community, you know, finding people to serve, uh, finding people to respond to his message, etc. that she went before God and she said, God, you know, what, what do you want me to bring before you? What do you want me to do so that you will come and intervene and respond? And God said, I want you to pray uh, at starting at 9 a.m. every day for three years and pray every day for nine 9 a.m. till sundown. That's nine. That's like 10 hours every day for three years. Now, that's a huge commitment to make. But she made that commitment. And on top of that, he asked her to commit to fast. That is to not eat for 72-hour period, for a 72-hour period every week for two of those three years. And what she did is she not only fasted, but she prayed for those 72 hours straight through um, for those three days every week in the church. And she committed to not go home and even sleep in her own bed during those 72-hour periods. And she said if she got tired, she would just sleep on the floor. And so this was a person who was fully committed to the understanding that it's up to God, that her husband couldn't do it, she couldn't do it, only God could do it. She needed God to intervene. But guess what? Needing God to intervene can be hard work because she... Uh, cried out to God with everything that she had. She gave up everything she had. She she showed God. She put off enough passion and desperation and heat that he, as a heat-seeking missile, saw her, heard her, and, and intervened. Uh, there's a story in Exodus chapter 14. It's, it's a famous story. So many movies have been made. You know about the Israelites uh, leaving Egypt after the, the 10 plagues that happened. They leave Egypt, they leave Egypt, and what's so interesting is that in chapter 14, the beginning, God gave instructions to Moses to, to have them actually turn back, it says in verse 2, and he, he got them essentially stuck between a rock and a hard place. He got the Red Sea behind, he positioned them in such a way that the Red Sea was behind them, and the, the chasing Egyptian army was in front of them, and so they had no escape. Their only escape was if God did something miraculous. And of course, they complained. But in verses 13 and 14 of chapter 14, Moses told the people, Don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. You, you know, the equation, the solution, the answer in my life and in yours is not you. It's not me. The answer is stand still 
Stay calm and watch the Lord rescue you today. And that is what he will do. So I want you to know that there is hope and it's not in you. There is hope and it is in God Almighty who created the heavens and the earth, who created the universe around you and who can do anything in your life. If you will do the hard work of standing still, staying calm and watching God work and you stay still and you stay calm until he works, however long it takes for him to show up, you do your part, which is to wait on him and he will intervene and do his part, which is to rescue you. All right, guys, have a great Monday. Thanks.